Sports here with Marty Music, hanging out with two of my good friends who are in the band Wayland, and it is Mitchell and Phil. Hi guys from Wayland, and uh, we're gonna just talk shop, maybe jam a little bit. Yeah, talk about good. where we get our hats from. Exactly, probably, probably from the same place. Yeah, probably giving away all the secrets today. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a new record? Yes, yeah. we do, and it's out already. It's out. Came out March sixteenth. What's that called? It's called On the Way. The songs are like. Part of them were done in Joshua Tree in the desert, and part of them were done here in Nashville. You guys are Americana. It's like, Americana rock and roll. You know, we started out both acoustic guitars, and it grew into this rock and roll thing. And we've been really lucky. We had like I think four top forties on rock radio and two top twenties, and toured three hundred days a year for seven years straight, just hitting it hard. Three hundred's a lot. Yeah. Mean, we just didn't stop. Yeah, we yeah. just said yes to everything. We didn't. Yeah, know we did about two hundred fifty <laughs> shows a year. Yeah, just about. Wow. And so we didn't have anything else to do. You know what no. I mean? It was on the radio, and it was like, let's go build a fan base. Absolutely. Okay, so you were friends, songwriters. Where'd you guys meet? We met in L.A. We met in Los Angeles. We both, yeah. it's funny, I'm Mich Mich from Indiana, I'm from Michigan, but we jo both joined this, um, like a touring company that taught, we toured all over the world, teaching kids music. We did that for about two years, and on those tours, we started writing songs together. So you were, like, already, uh, like, adults or whatever when you met we were 18 yeah we we're 18 oh, okay. 19. what were you doing in la i was i mean i was dancing at the time i was a dancer and um oh now we're on to something yeah. exotic erotic yeah dancing. all time all types <laughs> when i met phil i had i never really had a friend that had been in a band before and he had been in bands his entire life and i was always jealous of the guys in the bands yeah i mean like i never really know anybody like that and he came in and really I mean, immediately, obviously, he was very encouraging to the songwriting, and 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 we both started writing songs together, and it just like it was something that just happened really organically. Kind of like the movie Step Brothers, where it's like, did we just become best friends? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like exactly. I met Mitch, he knew. I think you had already written a couple songs. Yeah, and I knew G, C, and D. And his voice was like, you know, it was really good. I was like, <laughs> how do you sing like that? He's like, oh, I'll, I'll teach you how to sing like this. It's no big deal. <laughs> and like, you know, so we just started hanging out and writing songs. Not had no idea the journey we were about to go on together but you know we just kept doing it because it it was working and then pretty soon we had a band around us and away we went and just yeah. didn't look back how did nashville end up in the equation like after some success already or like someone brought you here or we had toured we toured we got um we hooked up with like this label ironworks Kiefer sutherland had a label yep and, and he was like barely doing it anymore but um they helped us make a record and we didn't when that record came out, it was our, like our first EP, and we didn't want to be known as an L.A. band because we're not. We're two guys from the Midwest. Right. You know? So we took that record and moved back to Michigan with it and, like, set up in a farmhouse outside of Wayland, Michigan, my hometown. That's the band name. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and started touring the Midwest, and that's kind of how it all kind of happened. And then there was no... No stopping from there. And in the in the middle of that, we would always come to Nashville to record and to write and to just because as a musician, yeah, this was obviously a hub, you know. But uh, when the it, pandemic hit, we ended up yeah. in Joshua Tree, California, and that was like the first time after all the touring and stuff that it was we built a studio in in the desert and just started recording. I had no producer with us, obviously. This is anything. pandemic time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Being out there, like it was a game changer for us. Like yeah. waking up. We'd get up before the sun and head out into the park, you know, coyotes running around and just, it was unbelievable. Were you in the spirit world? Absolutely. I mean, kind of, <laughs> it was, yeah. It's, it was, hard, it's hard not to be, you know, like you don't, you don't, you're not meaning to be, but you step into that space and you're also during the pandemic yeah. where you don't have anything clearly to do. So you are searching within yourself a little bit and like the that. desert provided that, you know, that space for us to create as artists and to dive deep as humans, you know? Amazing. And yeah. then things opened back up and we were like, oh shit, what are we doing in the desert? There's, yeah, it there's really was here. like that. We're like, we can't, we can't tour from here, we can't do anything from here. Our like, first show is in Iowa, and you like get 36 hours away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel for any, uh, you know, performer during the pandemic, it was just the hardest time, you know? But I feel like uncertainty was kind of the common thing with everybody, whether you're a stockbroker or whether you're a musician sure. or any, everyone was wondering what was going to happen and everyone had those questions on their mind sitting at home, you know. And A so, lot of great art was made during that time. It was a great opportunity I, yeah, and we for had, that. We took We're that opportunity. We're grateful for the space, yeah, I would absolutely. say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 
Did you guys do like live streams and stuff? Or all no? the every time, day. Oh, almost yeah. every day. We, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of right before the pandemic. We uh, did the Kiss Cruise and the Bon Jovi Cruise. Nice. And uh, on those, we met this dude. He's this like celebrity dentist. He does stuff for the Miami Heat, and he did Michael Jackson when he was mm-hmm. alive, and Stephen Tyler, Stephen Tyler, Rob Thomas. You needed and dental so, work for them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So all the he invited us to his house to play for his birthday on March, middle beginning of March, mm-hmm. the year basically the weekend that COVID hit. Yeah. And so we ended up, he's like, oh, you know, like everything's going crazy on the news and the airlines are canceled. Just stay a couple days and we'll figure it out. And that kept happening. We ended up staying at this dude's house for 40 days. 40 days and 40 nights. In Boca at the beginning of the pandemic. Swimming in the pool. We went live every day. We called the quarantine concert series. We went live for our fans every day and ended up playing our whole catalog yeah. and did quarantine covers. And we, did, and we covers. learned to cover every day and yeah. it was really fun. So yeah, it was an interesting time, but... um. I feel like we came out of that more connected with our like fan base than ever. Amazing. But being in the desert, we weren't going for any certain sound. We were just writing songs and like recording what seemed right for the songs. And when it got done, we handed it to our manager and people we were kind of the team of people you're kind of working with and sending your stuff to. Everyone's like, wow, this is great. But this is not a rock record in 2023 or whatever, 2022. They're like, this is this sounds like it's country. I mean, the genre thing, like it, that made sense to us. I was raised on bluegrass music and and we've loved country music. We've never been afraid of that. We know that our music has always kind of sat in the middle in different, we can rock really hard or it can be super acoustic stuff with fiddle and pedal steel and mandolin. It seems like any music today where the guitar like wrote it, you know, like cause pop music, the guitar is like the seasoning. Mm-hmm. Like it's written with a beat. Right. And maybe a melody, a hook, a sample or something like that. And there's still guitar on it, but it's like at the end, you know, Mm -hmm. like let's bring a guitar player in here and add, it's almost like a percussion instrument and like, you know, mixed in with so much others. So it seems like today, if guitar wrote it, it's it's like country or it's like could be called country, even though it just sounds like rock. Yeah. Or like what we used to think what of we, rock. Yeah. Like if Tom Petty came out with one of his albums today. It would be a country record. They'd have to call it like. I think so. That's exactly and, how and we. And that's just yeah. more labeling for it, like it marketing. Is. Yes. But even like Full Moon Fever or something, you know, like. like That would not like be on free rock falling. radio. Yeah, free falling yeah. would be like, oh, he made a country record or whatever. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's not. Well, I kind, yeah. of, I kind of feel like right now country is the home of rock and roll. Yeah. It's where it you, went. It's you the know, only place we can go. Yeah. With our guitars and our hats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and stay, and stay in standard tuning. It's been a few years since I saw you and tearing away in a Chevy Cruze. You got the hell out of Dodge when I broke your heart. You're shooting me eyes while you're shooting whiskey. I came for a beer, staying for a memory. Catching up, picking up everything that fell apart. History repeats itself time and time again I guess we never really ended Way back when we had a hell of a love That fires right back up And we're burning again Just like way back when We ran those county lines Lit up those Midwest nights And now we're jumping Dude. Yeah, man, that sounded awesome. Hey, thank you. Great singing. Thank great you. Great playing. Did you always sing when you were little? I did. Yeah, my dad was a big athlete, but he like sang and he always sang in the car. And um, I was really big on harmonies when I was a kid. I like learned all. So the... you could like sing harmonies, just find them. Yeah, I well, he always sang the harmony to the song, so I learned the harmonies more than the melodies. Yeah. And when Phil and I got together, uh, he would sing all these like bluegrass and blues standards. And I would just follow along, you know, and kind of drum on the guitar and sing harmony to whatever he was doing. And that's kind of how we really started playing. Got I, me running. Yeah. And, yes. You know, and and Nine Pound Hammer and all, all these cool standard songs. And, and that was just always my role. And I loved singing harmony. And It's um, fun in the studio to hear him sing harmonies on top of harmonies uh, stack them up. Yeah, and, I love it. Yeah, I, yeah, I love cool doing gift. that. So, and I didn't really know, you know, like I wasn't, as a kid and as a, even in high school, I was never, I never had plans to be a professional musician. I never had a plans to be a, a professional singer. And it was something that literally called, you know, called me to the plate almost. The music that Phil and I made and started making 
you know, called me up front, and and it's it's an honor and it's a joy. It real, I mean, your voice is strong, man. It Thank cuts you. through too. Thank you. Like, because in the studio, we're just a cappella basically right yeah. now, mm -hmm. and so you kind of, I've had a lot of different people in here, so it's you know sometimes when someone's voice is a little bit softer, it doesn't cut through, and then other people, it's like. Wow. We grew up playing on the streets um, and you have to, when you open your guitar case and try to get people's attention, you're not going to get it playing softly. Right, you right. Know? The first time we played together, we would go down to Huntington, because we lived like in Fullerton, yeah. Orange County. We'd take the bus to Huntington Beach. Yep. And we'd open our guitar cases and do like Brown Eyed Girl and Hard to Handle. Oh, yeah. And just try to make enough money to buy glass mountain dew and some weed i guess yeah. yeah do you remember the first like song or riff you ever learned on guitar the first real riff that i learned i mean i learned some chords sure but sure. i think the first riff that i learned was staying on the zeppelin train We're getting the let out today <laughs> love it i think so yeah i'm not very good at playing right now but i'm not either <laughs> But that was the first one I ever learned. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, and I How love, you? I love that. Phil, love that song. I think my dad played guitar, but like he didn't want to teach me. He'd show me stuff once in a while, but they like insisted I had this guitar teacher, who was a super weird dude. Um, getting figure. ready for this, I thought I was trying to think back what the first thing was, and uh, the first thing I think he ever taught me was like a piece from Wipeout. Though. Nice, but more of like an exercise where I do it on every string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. <laughs> Still to this day, obviously. You know. Well, we're definitely yeah. around that. We have the same era of guitar teachers because mine was. Is that another piece of wipeout? No, it's uh, Peter Gunn, but it's oh, just like that same kind of. Yeah, yeah. And then also. Yeah. That's like Pipeline, maybe? I mean, the, definitely the. That was one yeah. of the first things as well. Like, you know. Yeah. Being in Michigan, so so close to Chicago, like even Grand Rapids, like is a very blues oriented town. So I was drawn to that immediately. Awesome. That's, I mean, Mitch is kind yeah. of a, you're kind of a part of grunge history. Am I really? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, let's hear that. I don't right. have I was... oh, no, 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 it's great. It's great. It's great. I, I just made out with Kirk Cobain's mom a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In Seattle? <laughs> no, it was in LA. It was at, at Ronnie like, James Dio's house. Yeah, Ronnie James Dio's house. <laughs> the story <laughs> goes. No, it was. I didn't know it was Kirk Cobain's mom, and um, uh, we were at Ronnie James Dio's house for a New Year's Eve party one year, and we were we were twenty years old. You know, know, you should have opened this idea with a story. By the way. <laughs> and, uh, but um, and she was this she was this you know hot older lady, and I was probably twenty at the time, and we started making out, and then I I got called away to do something. And she was like, how does it feel? How does it feel? I was like, what, what? And she was like, how does it feel to get to make out with Kirk Cobain's mom? I was like, I had no idea. Uh, but I, 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 and I don't remember, I don't remember. Well, hilarious story. I, I don't remember, but um, it happened again at another, at another party, and I don't remember that one. Do you but. think she remembered you? At the time at the she did. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. At the time she did. She, she came for it. Yeah, she did. Second she time. did. Yeah. Uh, that is amazing. She wanted the, the young energy at the time, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So that's really hard for Mitch to hear. Yeah. You know, it brings back it a lot of yeah. you, I mean, you should play that up more, man. Play that shit up, man. You like, hi, I'm Mitch. He's I pretty much Kirk uh, stepdad, right, honestly. Right. Pretty much. You pretty know? much. I don't need to say much. I can tell by your touch. You've been through hell and back. I wish I could take all your bad days and shatter them like glass through all the hurt. Could you ever guess that what you were doing was getting closer to us? Every other love just chipped away till it finally took the perfect shape. I wouldn't change a thing, but God, it hurt like hell. And now I love the way it looks lying next to yours. I don't regret anywhere it's been before, cause they don't Cried until they broke What if love's a hammer and hearts the stone You got a Martin here? Yeah, this is a... Mitchell uh, from uh, Wayland has a Yeah, this a is nice a 2004 OM21 that I actually bought from Phil's dad. I was looking for a good, dependable acoustic guitar, and this thing... <clears throat> 
just is a cannon as far as sound goes and it's it's great my plan with this i really want to retire it and i want to get a, a like a workhouse j45 right and take that and just leave this that at way home you're... and and have this for writing and just for that kind of thing all right phil tell me about that guitar obviously it's, it's a, cool uh, guitar. A, a guitar i like because i'm a big fan of the 335 yeah i always have been too um just because like i always wanted one obviously chuck berry like you know, and then like seeing Eric Clapton play one in Cream, and uh, you know Keith Richards played them, and also Freddie, back Freddie to the, King, Back to the Future too. Yes. So like you've got yeah. that thing. Yeah, yeah Freddie King, a huge oh Freddie God. King. I mean, Chicago yeah. Blues to me is like the most expressive guitar. Yeah. It just is. So I've always loved them, and I'm tall, so like Les Pauls tend to look a little small on me when I see them in pictures. But my dad found this in a guitar shop. It wasn't for sale. It was getting the strings changed on it in Kalamazoo, Michigan, the home of Gibson, where you can still find a lot of Gibsons in Hiding old away. ladies' attics and yeah. stuff. You know, it happens. And uh, he was like, what's up with that? And this dude literally had bought it for his son in 1965, and it had sat in the case ever since, and then his son decided not to learn to play guitar. So it was like untouched. The guy just really wanted to get rid of it because it had been sitting around for, and he was really happy to hear that it might go to someone playing guitar. He got it for me. It came with a big Vox amp, like a one of those little half stacks from the '60s as well, which is way too loud to ever play in public. But this has been with me ever since. I have had it like refretted. Um, but other than that, and I had this changed out because you know they have the um, it was like plastic yeah. parts in there. I had that changed out. But other than that, I think the tuners are are not original as well because these things started to crack and move yeah. and whatever and i wanted to play it you know you have to make that decision all right once again i want to thank wayland and obviously mitchell and phil from wayland and they've got a new album that's been out for a few months and we're gonna leave links for all your stuff yeah. social media the music the songs everything go check them out when they're playing a gig you will love it you'll have a great time thanks again you guys thanks for having Put us it there appreciate it man, Put awesome. it there. Thank you, man. Yeah. thanks again and uh hope to see you guys later thanks guys I wouldn't change a thing, but God